All right, I'm going to do a real quick video here on the thing of why do certain Bible-believing preachers use Catholic terms and yet teach the correct thing about the Godhead. Uh, Peter Ruckman's one of them. I'm another one. Um, you can listen to some of my older studies where I talk. I've always taught that God is three parts in one body. Right? And I might have confused the term and said persons or something and whatever else. And I've definitely said Trinity many times. Even some of my earlier videos where I was debunking this thing of this Catholic Trinity thing, I'd still say, now you can call it Trinity. I'll still use the word Trinity. I don't use that anymore. All right? I was wrong. I publicly apologize. All right? Did you hear me? I said I was wrong. I was in error saying Trinity. So all the people out there, all my enemies that try to say I'm prideful and won't admit to being wrong, I just did. You need to quit slandering me. All right? Stop the hate. <laughs> but uh, my wife found this thing here. This is the um, Catholic Encyclopedia um, from 1913 to 1914, volume uh, 15. And this is page number 50. Here, she printed it out for me. And it says, and here's the whole thing, why do people, you know, myself, Ruckman, other Bible-believing preachers out there, they'll use the terms Trinity or God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Father is fine to use because that is a Bible term. But, um, you know, they'll use that. They'll say, you know, whatever. Here's why. Number three, the doctrine, and this is a Catholic encyclopedia, okay? Again, showing sources here. The doctrine of the Trinity is formally taught in every class of ecclesiastical writing. Now, is that true? The seminaries are teaching it. They're saying Trinity. They're not using the word Godhead. And I didn't even look it up. I'm going to have to look this up. I wonder how many of the new versions have replaced Godhead with Trinity. That'd be an interesting study. I'll have to get to that. But that's the whole thing. The Jesuit order, their stated purpose way back in you know, the mid-16th century, 1540 or whatever it was with Ignatius de Loyola, and he comes out and he says, Counter-Reformation. We want to get in there. We want to infiltrate every Protestant uh, system out there, denomination, church, seminary, whatever else. And they realized the best way to do this is not to try to get into Protestant churches so much, but get into the seminaries. So in a number of generations, you can retrain guys that have come out against Rome and flip it and actually get them to teach Roman Catholic uh, doctrines and, you know, whatever else. Know what I mean? And uh, that's the whole thing. So it has been so thoroughly ingrained in our minds. And as Christians, we've been, we've been trained for generations to bring this term Trinity back into, you know, the lexicon, if you will, the the you know, dictionary of, of words that we would use into our speech. We've been trained and trained and trained to say this term over and over and over again. That's why so many people have a hard time not saying Trinity. That's why I had a hard time with it. Again, listen to Peter Ruckman's stuff on the whole Godhead thing. And he will teach that Jesus Christ is one, you know, body, three parts, body, soul, spirit. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's what Ruckman teaches. But he will use a lot of this terminology over here. Why? Because the Catholic Encyclopedia said, let's get it into all the ecclesiastical writings. And if you think that just means Catholic, you are quite foolish. Another place it says here, Yet further ev evidence regarding the church's doctrine is furnished by a comparison of her teaching with that of heretical sects, the controversy with the Sibylians in the 3rd century proves conclusively that she would tolerate no deviation from Trinitarian doctrine. Sibylianism was very much over here. And again, I'm not going to get into all that stuff. It doesn't matter. You know, the Catholic Church is always trying to make this thing about a man. Well, a man teaches this thing. You know, uh, it's ridiculous. But you see, it was there in the 3rd century they were debating this thing. Old Catholics have always believed in the Trinity, or Christians, Christians, excuse me, Christians. Um, no, that's not true. It goes the whole way very back to the very beginning. It goes way back. And of course, that's not really the standard. What did Christians believe in the past? The Bible's the standard. I just thought that was rather interesting. Uh, where's my, here it is, my remote. Let me zoom in on these two so you can read them.
Okay. Get there with a little red arrow pointing to it. I'm going to go down here to this next one. Okay. Again, you can pause that and read it. And again, you know, oh, Denlinger's such an idiot. Denlinger's such an idiot. Okay. Denlinger holds up sources. I show them on camera. I show you the documentation. I prove what I'm saying. My enemies don't. They just come out with a bunch of accusations and everything against me, calling me a liar and calling me whatever else and, and things. And uh, they don't prove what they're saying. Um, again, uh, what's the truth? The truth is that the Catholic Church has been trying desperately to get control over all people. They're control freaks. The devil is a control freak. The devil is, his church is Roman Catholicism. And so they want very, very desperately, if they can't woo you in with promises and things, if they can't threaten you in, then they will infiltrate your numbers. And so as Christians, as Bible-believing Christians, we always have to be on the lookout. We always have to be vigilant for those Catholic terminology, different words and things coming from the Catholic Church, different teachings from the Catholic Church, like replacement theology. All posties go, go into the, the replacement theology thing eventually. There might be some that say, well, no, I, don't, I believe God has plans for future plans for the nation of Israel and Israel, you know, he, he, the church hasn't replaced Israel and whatever else. Uh, well, then what are you doing putting Christians in the time of Jacob's trouble when God's dealing with the nation of Israel? But you see, Catholic teachings, Catholic terminology, like that, they try very, very hard to come in. And as I said, this isn't, even, this isn't the God of the Bible. There are three gods here, all right? There's one god over there. So they're actually, if they can get you to say Trinity and get you to fall for this whole thing and start using their terminology, you are literally referring to a false pagan idol. That's what you're doing. I think this, the devil would be kind of happy if he'd get Christians to do that. And, you know, we all make mistakes. I'm not going to say that Ruckman was a lost Jesuit infiltrator, blah, blah, blah. Not at all. No. I'm not a lost Jesuit infiltrator or something because I used a lot of those terms. I very innocently repeated those things. I very innocently came along and said, well, Trinity and, you know, the persons of God. It was in my uh, About Us thing on King James Video Ministries. And I saw people and they were saying, you know, different people contact me and say, hey, brother, you're saying this and that and whatever else in, in your About Us thing and about the what your beliefs are and whatever. And I said, oh, yeah, you're right. I went and I changed it. I had an old, old audio sermon about man, the three parts of man, body, soul, spirit. And it was called the Trinity, body, soul, spirit. Um, and I, all throughout that sermon, I'm saying the Trinity, the Trinity, the Trinity. And you can say the Trinity and you don't have to stop saying the Trinity and whatever else. I was repeating things. As a Christian, you will repeat something that you will later on find out that was wrong. I shouldn't have been repeating that. The thing that separates the saved from the lost, though, is when you are repeating things that are wrong, the Holy Spirit of God will get in there and He'll convict your heart and He'll say, you need to stop that. You need to line up with my book. And you'll say, I'm sorry, Lord. I shouldn't have been saying that. I messed up. And I messed up. And I'm sorry for saying the word Trinity. And for saying a lot of that other stuff, I never meant to deceive anybody. I was deceived myself. And I think the same thing was true for Ruckman. Ruckman taught the right thing about the Godhead. I remember him saying in one of his sermons, he said about, He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. No man hath seen you know, the Father at any time. And he said, you know, say it this way. You know, he that hath seen me hath seen Pete Ruckman. No man hath seen Pete Ruckman at any time. And he's saying, what am I talking about? Peter Ruckman is the soul. Again, Brother Philip Newton came out with a real good video recently, and he said about the thing of, you know, the only thing that's eternal really here is the soul, all right? The spirit leaves you at death. The body falls onto the ground and rots. Now, you get a, a incorruptible body at the catching away of the body of Christ, you know, and things at the rapture. Well, you want to call it the rapture, the catching away. Excuse me, I'm using another unscriptural term, you know. I mean, it's hard. 
It's hard. Your flesh wants to say these things that you've heard and you just repeat and you learn to repeat things. You know, I told this story before back years ago when I was a young man. There was a, a pasture way back in the woods behind my, my house, my childhood home. And I walked back to the pasture the one time there was a whole herd of sheep out there. And I remember one of them saw me and he went, Meh, you know, and he and took off and he started running. And the whole herd just followed that one sheep. And they're all, meh, meh, meh. They didn't see me. Only one sheep saw me. And he made a noise. And the rest started making the same noise. And they all took off with him. Well, there's a reason the Lord likens us to sheep. Because we'll hear things and we'll repeat things. And all of a sudden you look up in the Bible and you say, wait a second, that's not in there. Then you have a responsibility to change it. Change your speech to line up with the book. And if you see me saying things and you hear me saying things that are not in the scriptures, correct me. Tell me about it. And I'll try my best to change. Again, the Christian life, you get better. You refine. You see? Sanctification. So, it's a very important issue, brethren. Uh, if you've seen the other video, this system here is leading down to this, the Antichrist system. I suggest that you line up your speech with the King James Bible. And, uh, and again, i got to say one other thing here real quick, and that is it isn't about Ruckman. I love Dr. Ruckman, but he was wrong in a couple areas. This is the standard. Thank you to those out there who, uh, you know, the Bible talks about to esteem them very highly and work for their, or in love for their work's sake and things, uh, you know, a, a elder that labors in the word and doctrine, you know, and everything else is counted worthy of double honor. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, I think it is, talks about that. Thank you. I thank the Lord for those friends of mine out there that understand the labor that I put into the, the ministry. Uh, you've learned a lot from me. Uh, well, praise the Lord. But I'm not your standard. I'll never be your standard. And, you know, Brother Philip Newton, I, I'm thankful for what he said in his video. And he said, you know, a lot of people say, oh, what would ever happen if, if you got kicked offline or something, Brother Ryan? Um, well, you still have the Holy Spirit and you still have the, bu the book, the Bible, I was going to say. You can esteem me very highly in love for, for my work's sake. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, but I'm not the standard. Ruckman's not the standard. You get it? Okay. That's going to be it. I pray that you would consider these things and change your speech to match the book.